we have around 130 uh, million broadband users in the country. And out of those uh, 130 million, there are 110 uh, 4G broadband users. The total sectoral revenues are uh, 800 billion rupees a year. And, and this sector actually gives, I think, more than 400 billion rupees a year in the form of the tax revenues and the collected tax revenues in the form of GSTs, in the form of advanced income tax, and in the form of withholding tax to the federal government as well as to the, all the provinces in the country. So, and, 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 this success is, is, and this success is actually based on openness and competition. Without openness and competition, this success actually wouldn't have been possible. So just imagine that if there have been only one, uh, one operator in the country, the, I mean, say, uh, uh, only incumbent operator in the country, what would have been the, uh, what would have been the situation of the telecom industry today in Pakistan? We would, uh, so we would have been seeing a lot of outages, a lot of internet outages, and, 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 and we would have been seeing a lot of inefficiencies, and we would have been seeing a lot of price increases for the customer. So telecom sector is the only sector, I think, which has not been able to pass on the price increase to the consumer fully. And, and Pakistan actually ranks one of the lowest in the world in terms of the average revenue per customer, and, and which is around 230 rupees per customer per month. So which means less than one dollar a month average revenue. So this is all the beauty of having an openness and competition. Because competition means improvement. Competition means innovation. Competition actually drives all the operator to innovate, to improve their services, to compete on the quality, and also compete on the prices, and to deliver better and better services to the customer. And monopolies on the, I mean, monopolies actually, monopolies stall the innovation. Monopolies stifle the innovation, and, 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 and this is a big dilemma in Pakistan, because in Pakistan, actually, we are very government-centric, and government is actually very interested to do businesses as well. And, and, and the government keeps on doing businesses despite a lot of uh, losses, a lot of failures, a lot of SOEs generating billions of losses, circular debts. But government's passion with the business is not actually going away. So this is a dilemma that, I mean, this is a dilemma that the, 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 I mean, that the businesses are facing. And, the, and, and that dilemma is that the private sector businesses, they are generating wealth. They generate wealth, they pay taxes, government collects those taxes, that's fine. Government should be investing those taxes on, I think, education, on health, on infrastructure, on justice, and on the safety and security of the citizen. I think these are the five main priority areas of the government where I would say 90, 95% of the tax money should be going or should be invested. But government actually, government is investing a lot of taxpayers' money into their own businesses. And those businesses are competing with the private businesses from whom taxes those businesses have been funded. And, and, and on top of that, the, 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 the government-owned businesses are provided a higher ground and the private businesses are provided a lower ground. So this is actually kind of a, this is actually kind of adding insult to the injury to the private sector. And I can say with the confidence that my company, Neatel, Neatel survived and thrived in, in a hyper competitive environment. We survived and thrived in a hyper competitive environment because it is the competition which actually enables the businesses to, to I mean, to remain alert. 24 by 7 and serve that customers. 
And so, th so that was the first thing, that government should only regulate. Government should not, so I mean, it is no business of the government to doing business. So government should stay out of it. So that is the first and the foremost. And second thing, in Pakistan, I think we are perhaps uh, are going, uh, I mean, reverse side. Because all over the world, the structured businesses, the compliant businesses, those businesses which are paying taxes, those businesses which are complying all the laws, regulations, whatever, whether it is EOBI, whether it is social security compliant, whether it is labor law compliant, all those compliant businesses, they are at disadvantage. And, and, and how they are at disadvantage? A simple story. That you are building in a building and a security guard is sitting there. He says, you are sitting in line. So you are in line because you are a compliant citizen. And uh, so you say, okay, I am in line. Then you see, people are going to go to the other people. So you ask them, people are going to the other people. They say, they don't ask me. And you ask them, they are in line. So this is the story. Because we, so, I mean, because we believe that to be a compliant business is the right way to do things. But, but all the compliances and, and everything are actually stamped on the compliant businesses. And the non-compliant is, they say, you can do what you do. So there is no question from you. But all the structured and those businesses are, are, are facing a lot of dilemma. So this is the second, uh, so, uh, so this is a second barrier, I think, which we need to overcome. And this barrier can be, I mean, can only be overcome by, by changing the mindset by changing the mindset of the regulators and the policy makers to shift their mindset from the trigger happy mindset to, to, to have a mindset of being a facilitator and enabler. So basically the whole country is actually running on the <laughs> court stay orders. I mean, if you look at, at, at most of the compliant businesses, so many company, I think we may be having three, four dozens of stay orders against the taxation against the regulators and whatever, and many stay orders are going on for last many years. So, so stay order means the status quo. So, if you have the the the, the uh, so if you have the this environment of being a status quo country, so what to talk about the innovation in that status quo society? Because innovation is society that society status quo ko break karna chahte. So we are a society actually which, which is encouraging the status quo and, 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 uh, and, and, and that society is, is, is running on the old, I think I would say, colonial mindset. So I think we need to get out of this thing. So, and, and now I would say, I think it is the time, it is the time out of this crisis that we have tried so many things under, under the sun. So let's do the right things now. Let's do the right things now with which the, the, the world is progressing and with which the world is moving in the right direction. And, 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 and I think there is a great inspiration from the divine book, Quran, which says, Everyone has a direction and your direction is to compete in the right things. Your, so your direction should be to compete in the good things. We need to compete in the good things. We don't need to compete in the bad things. So I think this is the time that, that we should take away this, this NOC culture because this NOC culture is actually killing our society. And, and, and uh, last, that speed is not important. Direction is important. So we need to set our direction right, and then we need to move forward and creating distortions, creating non-compliant and non-structured business, and creating command and control is very easy. Creating competition, creating a competitive environment, creating an innovative environment, and creating openness is very difficult. So it, so it is time to do the right things, regardless whether they are difficult, because eventually they would actually transform into the opportunities, because this is how 
the, the great nations transform those difficulties into the opportunities. And I would end with the great saying of uh, Iqbal, because it is very easy to make things difficult, and it is difficult to make things easy. It is very easy to make things difficult, and but it is difficult to make things easy. Nasha pila ke girana to sab ko aata hai. Nasha pila ke girana to sab ko aata hai. Maza to tab hai ke girton ko tham le saakhi. Nahi akbal na umid apni kishte viran se. Zara nam ho to ye matti badi zarkhez hai saakhi.